Dr. Erica, and we are back for some more awesome holiday um, circuit cards, and I am super excited to do this with you. You can either download the picture or you can draw the picture with us, and then uh, if you download it, it's got a circuit template on the back, but we'll wire it up together today. So you can do this all at home right now if you're ready. And to be ready, you need a few items. I use some cardstock paper. I just need a half sheet per project. I like to draw in Sharpie, but you can use whatever you like. And then to wire it up, you'll need some scotch tape, which is non-conductive tape. You'll need some copper tape, which is gonna help us conduct electricity. And you'll need an LED. Today I have a really fun rainbow LED because we're gonna do a Christmas tree. And you'll need something to power your circuit. And I like to use these CR2032 batteries. And of course, then you'll need also scissors if you're gonna cut out your project. Now, LEDs are a little tricky to find, but we have an online um, shopping list on Amazon. So you can go and you can get all the stuff that you need to be set up to do a lot of our paper circuit projects. So let's get started. So with the tree, we want actually the light at the top of the tree to light up. And I really like to cover the back of all of our circuits with a nice little tab. So here is an example of our Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You can't actually see the circuit, and I think that gives it a nice look. But with the tree, since we're going to have it light up at the top, that means the bottom of our tree has to be no more than halfway down the paper. So you're going to want to sort of find a spot for halfway down, and that's where our tree is going to end. I like to start by drawing a little dot where I'm going to put my LED and I'm going to put it a little bit down because I'm going to draw a star around that. So we'll start by drawing a fun little star for the top of our tree. And I like to draw a few triangles going around but sometimes you can do sort of the five points and you can just draw right through it. That's totally fine. And now I want to think about the bottom, so about halfway down is the furthest we're going to go. And to give myself an idea about that, I'm just going to draw where the trunk would be. I have a nice fat trunk, and that trunk can actually go over a little bit. And so we'll draw the trunk of our tree in. And this bottom part is going to be the tab that covers up the circuitry in the back. So we're going to want that to come pretty high up. But if we go really thick down, when we fold it behind, we'll have all this cardboard. So we're actually going to taper it in to a point. And if you don't taper it enough, no big deal. You can always cut more off after. So we've got that guy there. So that's going to be the tab that covers up our circuit. And now we just need to draw in our tree. So I'm going to start by sort of drawing in the top of our tree, it's going to just sort of come out a little bit on both sides. And then I like little rounded edges, so we'll just round these guys over. And we'll keep doing that, and as we do it, we're going to keep going out. So this one's going to come out more. I'm going to go out as evenly as possible on each side, so we sort of have an even Christmas tree. So we'll do it again where we go out, and then we'll sort of bring it in a little bit, and then this last one, we'll go out, and bring it in, out, and bring it in, and then we can sort of connect these pieces to the bottom. So I have sort of a nice fat little tree trunk and my Christmas tree, and then we want to give it a little bit of character. So I'm going to draw two big circles, and these are going to be actually the eyes of my Christmas tree. And in each side of these circles, we're going to draw a big circle and then a little circle. And they're going to be sort of offset so they can fit right next to each other in it. And we'll color in those eyes. These are like little cartoon eyes that my five-year-old loves to draw with. I think they make any drawing just come to life. I love the look that they give and how easy they are to do. And coloring it in really good it makes a big difference in what your final product looks like. So we've got the little eyes. Let's give it a cute little smile. Just a little 
swoop right there. And then every Christmas tree needs some ornaments, if you ask me. So we'll just add a few ornaments to our tree, however you want. I don't know if you like to add a lot of ornaments or a few ornaments, but I'm gonna add that many ornaments to our tree. Now, if you are planning on coloring in your tree, it's a great time to do that right now. You could actually color front and back of it um, because once we start wiring it up, we're gonna have an LED and some wires and some copper tape and it gets all sort of bumpy and a little more difficult to color in. So once you've colored it in the way you want, we are going to cut this fun little tree out. So I'm gonna pull this up. I'm looking at it right now and it kind of looks like a tree ice cream cone to me. I don't know if you see that, but it looks like a Christmas ice cream. Maybe I'm just hungry for some yummy pumpkin ice cream. Pumpkin is like my favorite. I think I could eat pumpkin every day, all day during the during this season. It's too bad they don't grow year round. I might just turn myself into a pumpkin. That's how much I love the pumpkins. All right, some of these guys, these curves can be a little tricky. So you can, if you're having trouble, you can use like a pair of smaller scissors, like nail scissors. You can come in from different angles, like what I'm doing. That can help sometimes a lot. You can ask for help. Knowing when and how to ask for help is always a really important tool for a scientist. I have asked for help a lot in my life and I would not be where I was if I didn't have people who had helped me along the way. So if you're finding yourself frustrated with the cutting, you can always ask somebody near you for help. Alrighty. This little tree is reminding me we don't actually have our tree yet in our house. I think we might get a really little one this year though. I like the little ones. They got so much personality. And then the presents always look so majestic against it because they're so big in comparison to like the little tiny tree. Alrighty, so now we're gonna cut the rest of this out like that. And we are ready to wire it up. Alrighty, so our LED is gonna go up here and you'll have to decide if you want your LED to sort of be in the back and light it up and then you'll sort of see it shine from behind your tree or we can put it through right here. And I kinda like putting them through just cause it gives you a lot of, um, a lot of brightness and a lot of sort of excitement. So what I do when I push it through, I just take a ballpoint pen and right around my, where I put that little hole I'm gonna put two small holes from the pen. So I'm gonna push down really hard and then pull up on my drawing. And that gives me two little tiny holes that I can thread the legs of my LED through. Sometimes without cardstock, with regular paper, you can actually poke it through, but I find it's a lot easier if you sort of get those holes in there first. Otherwise your legs might get really bent out of shape. Now your LED, you'll notice, has two different sizes of legs. It has what we call the long leg and the short leg. And the long leg always goes to the top of the battery. That's the side of the battery you see the plus sign on and it has the writing on. And then the short leg always goes to the bottom of the battery, which usually looks like it's got sort of some dots or a texture to it. When I do paper circuits, I usually like to double check that everything works like I thought. So when I attach it to the battery, this tells me the battery's good and the LED is good, which is handy. And if you happened to flip your battery or your LED around, you'll notice nothing happens. And that is because LEDs are one-way streets. So they here they're actually looking at the wrong direction of the street and they don't wanna get in a car crash or anything, so they don't go anywhere. Whereas here they realize, oh, we can go forward and they light up and get really excited. So we've tested that, and now we're going to just figure out how we're gonna wire this up. And again, if you have um, the printable template of this, you'll have 
where to put all of your wires on it for you. But we're just going to go with a blank piece of paper right now if you decide you wanted to freehand it and be ready. So we're going to get our copper tape ready and I am going to thread the legs of my LED through these two holes just like that. And that's going to be a really awesome bright star we have. And then we'll flip it over and we are going to fold these little legs down like that. Now these legs, they can't touch each other, so this is going to be a little bit tricky because the copper tape that goes to the legs also can't touch each other. All right, and let's also actually pre-bend our flap up so we know where it's going to be. This is how we're going to cover up that circuit in the back. And you'll notice that ice cream cone shape is going to make it look perfect on the other side. That's going to be great. All right, and that fold helps me know where I can put my battery at, which is right there. All right, so this one, the short leg, which for me is right here, can just go straight under the battery. That's a pretty easy one to do. So what I'll do is I can actually lift up the leg. You know what? I think I might actually even take out my entire LED right now. I'll make it a little bit easier to put my copper tape down. So here we've got this leg is going to be our short leg that goes right up to there. Although we don't want to go too close to where the LED comes out because we can't have those legs touch each other. All right, so that is that piece right there, just a nice straight line. And the tricky part is going to be to see if we can't get the long leg of the LED connected without also having to make a nice little, without having to do a bend in the wire. And I'm kind of thinking we might run just right parallel along it, just like that. So when I do the copper tape, one trick, I have a little piece on my finger actually, one trick to getting it is to use your fingernail to separate it right here. And this can be the toughest part and the most frustrating part. So if this is the part that you find hard, know that I am right there with you. Once you have it started, you don't actually want to peel it all the way off. And I can actually show you with this. I'll cut this. I'll show you what it does if we peel it all the way off instead of putting it down. What it does is it gets really twisty and this is really hard to sort of manage because it folds up on itself and we don't want to have to deal with that because you can rip it and if you rip it you've got to start all over again. So I like to lay it down right as I am putting it on, peeling it off. All right so we are going to go as close to this other leg as possible without actually touching the two wires together. And we're going to go all the way down for right now. Maybe not all the way down. We'll go down to about here, part midway, like that. So when it folds up, this piece is actually going to end up going that direction. It'll go right on top of our battery. Although you might notice a problem we're going to have, and that is when I place the battery here, the bottom is touching both the long leg and the short leg. And if I have the long leg and the short leg on just the bottom, you'll notice my LED doesn't light up. I need the long leg on top of the battery and the short leg on the bottom of the battery. And the way we're going to prevent this long leg from touching the bottom, because the long leg is going to go right here, we're going to put a piece of scotch tape right there, which will be a way to block that from happening. Put a little piece of scotch tape, and now when I'm here, I'm just touching that part of the wire. And from here, oops, we can tape our battery in. You don't need too much to tape your battery in. You don't want to tape straight across the top of your battery, because if you do that, then this piece of copper tape can't make contact with the top of that battery. And if it doesn't make contact, then we don't have a circuit that is working. 
So we need to make sure that we make contact to have a complete circuit. In fact, that will be what we use as our switch. When we press it down, it should light up. And then when we let it go, it should not be lit up. So I am going to test this. Now I have my long leg needs to come through this hole right there. I just want to make sure you get it oriented the right way. And we will now we're going to use scotch tape on each of these legs to tape it down to its piece of copper tape. We need probably do both of them with one piece of copper tape right here. You're going to want to get them to press down really nicely. Sometimes I kind of almost bend the legs so they press for me. So now I've got that piece of copper tape right there. And then we're actually ready to test by touching the top of this to the top of the battery. And you'll notice if we follow this line up, it goes to our long leg. So we'd have the top of the battery going to our long leg through the LED into our short leg which went underneath our battery. And when we do that, it does indeed light up, which is great. So now just to finish covering up the circuit, we want this guy to stay right here so that it sort of permanently covers that circuit. Like this. And if it lights up right away and you don't want that, what you can do is try to give, oops, give a little bit more space to your battery so that it's not touching the top of that battery. So I just sort of bent this out and curved it above the battery a little bit more. And then when I press it, it still works. So I can press it on or not. And the other thing you can do is if you have a little clip you can always add the clip to this and have it be permanently on. So that's sort of a fun little thing. You can also, if you don't have a clip, you can just tape it a little bit tighter or bend it, press it, because when we first bent it, it was always on. So all I need for this little cutie is to color it in and have a great little Christmas tree. You can stand it up in your windows. You could put it on your tree if you wanted to. It's all up to you. And of course, you don't have to use a rainbow star like I used. You could use a yellow star or your favorite color of a star would be pretty great. I just know that my littlest one loves rainbows, so she will get a kick out of this. Thank you so much for joining me with this fun little holiday paper circuit craft project. I hope that we'll see you again for our either we have Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, or we're going to have some snowmen. And again, if you need any of the supplies you've seen in this, we'll have an online Amazon shopping link that you can get everything really easy and know that it's what we use in our products too. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.